So uh, I just wanted to give a brief overview on some of the things we've done in the last few years, as well as uh, kind of maybe answer a few questions that I've been getting recently. Uh, first, I like this picture that was from last year from a wheat field between uh, Mitchell and Morrill. It's an irrigated wheat field. It was uh, produced over 130, I think it was about 132, 133 bushel wheat last year. Um, and the grower was really happy with it. Uh, we have a lot of folks who might have irrigation uh, for fields, but be, uh, due to some restrictions in these coming years, might be looking for some alternative crops where they can uh, grow a crop that might use less water. Wheat's a fantastic option under irrigation if properly managed and can do well. So in the drying crops program, uh, we do a lot of things. Obviously, wheat is our primary focus with the amount of acres that are out here in the Panhandle, but we also work with, uh, you know, uh, soil water management crop livestock integration and other uh, uh, just a variety of crops. Um, and the whole purpose is to get this in the hands of uh, producers uh, so that they can use it and implement it in their own operations. Uh, this is kind of a schematic of uh, how that works for us. Uh, we kind of the hope is that what we do in the research feeds into our extension program and that we can receive feedback from uh, producers and stakeholders that drives questions that we can use to uh, uh, seek out some new research questions. Um, hopefully most of you were uh, who received the emails about this meeting received the, uh, the uh, booklet um, in a PDF form of uh, kind of the research reports. Uh, we don't have time to go through all of those uh, different topics. If you have questions about any of those, uh, please reach out to myself or whoever uh, authored those uh, reports and, and uh, seek out further information there. A lot of good research going on. We just don't have time to cover it all uh, uh, each time. Wanted to highlight a few projects that we recently finished up from some graduate students that came through the High Plains Ag Lab. This first one was led by Luana uh, and she was looking at weed control and in, a, in wheat residue as, at, as one of her projects. When we have stripper headed wheat out there for, you know, it's great for uh, conserving soil moisture, but it uh, also uh, can make some other challenges as far as weed control is concerned. And so we wanted to look at some different nozzles as well as different sprayer direction travel to see how that would impact the, uh, the uh, the ability of spray droplets to penetrate into that uh, wheat residue. So to do this, we put in, in this picture here, uh, here on the right, we put these uh, Petri dishes on the ground as our uh, collectors. And then the uh, spray um, had a little tracer die that we put in there so we could uh, uh, accurately collect how much spray was uh, collected in these dishes. Uh, we had uh, two different uh, stubble heights. We had a tall one that was over center over 70 centimeters and one that was half of that height and 35 centimeters about. And the, that taller spray, a spray, a, a residue a decreased spray deposition by, by 37% uh, compared to that medium stubble height, which was about 23% reduction. So uh, again, it's no surprise that wheat residue does intercept spray droplets. And it's just something that we need to be uh, aware of, because uh, it is something that we need to deal with when we have a lot, a lot of residue out there. Uh, this uh, figure is a little bit uh, noisy, but I do think there's some good information there. This has a, the four different uh, uh, nozzles across the bottom, and then the, uh, uh, the three different uh, uh, sprayer travel directions across the, uh, for each different bar. The black bar being the angular direction, the uh, white bar is parallel to the wheat row, and then the gray bar was perpendicular to the wheat rows. Um, and ultimately, uh, the AIXR nozzle was pretty consistent across the, the three different directions. If you think about the AIXR nozzle, it sprays directly down from the spray boom, whereas the TTI and the TTJ have, have kind of an angular direction, um, uh, the TTI being 15 degrees forward, and the TTI the TTJ being a twin fan nozzle with a forward and a backward uh, uh, fan. Um, and so the AIXR sprayed directly down. So uh, as far as when that spray drop leaves the nozzle to, to its intended target on the ground, it's straight down. It has the shortest distance of travel. 
the TTI when it sprays out on that angle, um, or the TTJ for that matter, uh, has to travel through uh, a, a farther distance to uh, reach that uh, target and, and has a greater likelihood of being, of being intercepted. The XR is, a, is a, like the AIXR in that it sprays uh, straight down, but it has a much smaller spray droplet. And so I like to think of uh, those larger droplets um, have the ability to bounce off some of that residue and kind of bounce off that uh, wheat residue and, and uh, get lower. Whereas the smaller droplet is more likely just to settle on that wheat residue and not uh, kind of bounce down to its intended target. So um, I really like the AIXR nozzle, but uh, you also see in some of the other nozzles, the XR, the TTJ, um, that spraying at an angular direction uh, improved those nozzles uh, ability to uh, get that spray deposited in those uh, uh, petri dishes. So um, that is something that we can do uh, is uh, change up how we uh, travel in the field and also make sure we think about the types of nozzles that we're using up, uh, and that spray droplet and other things. We had another student that looked at uh, some uh, field P research looking at planting date and population. Um, First thing that I want to talk about with the SAMS work is, is uh, planting date. And we really saw that, uh, that whether we plant early or late, uh, early in this case would be about the first part of March, late would be the last part of March or first part of April. Um, it really didn't matter uh, when we were planting it because each year was so different that uh, uh, it really came down to a growing degree days, basically, and cumulative heat units. Um, the peas really don't do much until we get 200 uh, units accumulated, and then it, they really take off uh, up to 500. And so just making sure that, that the peas are in the ground um, and ready to go when we get a little bit of heat on the ground, uh, the peas handle the cold temperatures really well, uh, but, we, but they're getting them out there uh, so they can take advantage of that early season moisture and get going is important. Uh, he also collected some uh, yield components uh, looking at population. So you see the population across the bottom there of this figure. And as we increase population, our grain yield increase in that first top left and the top right. Um, as our population increase, our pods per plant decrease, which is uh, not surprising. And the bottom left, the seeds per plant decrease and also uh, on the bottom right, the seeds per pod decrease as that plant population increase. So just some of the components that we look at it kind of help us understand what's going on when we look at the, the uh, yield data. We also wanted to look at the uh, plant population that we should be targeting. Uh, a lot of uh, range in, in what we should be doing. This looks at, at the economically optimal plant population. So it takes into consideration the cost of the seed as well as the market price and the yield. And ultimately, you see the, uh, the red and, and green line uh, were both from about 80 to 95 uh, uh, plants per meter squared. That black line was Sydney in 2019, it, and, and it was clear up to 143 uh, plants per meter squared. That was a year that was we had an extremely cool uh, spring and, and growing season, uh, really suppressed the growth of, of, of the field peas. And we needed a lot more field peas to be able to uh, reach that optimal population. On a normal year, like we saw with the, with the, the acidity in 2018 and Hemingford in 2018, uh, that population between 80 to 95 seemed to do uh, really well. Uh, and so that's what I would recommend folks try to target is, is to make sure that we're getting a population of at least 80 to 100 uh, plants per meter squared when we're putting our field peas out. And then lastly, I wanted to touch base on kind of this upcoming year uh, considerations for uh, corn production out there on our dryland acres. This is some work that was done by uh, David Nielsen down in Akron, uh, looking at uh, the amount of soil water available uh, at uh, when we plant the corn and its probability of uh, producing certain yields. And so uh, this is in, in the metrics there, but uh, the 2000 uh, uh, kilograms per hectare represents uh, 
approximately 30 bushel per acre, where the 4,000 would be 60 bushel per acre, and the 6,000 would be 90 bushel per acre. Uh, 100, well, let's see, yeah, 100 uh, millimeters is about four inches of plant available water. 200 millimeters is eight, and that 300 is is um, 12 inches. And, and so what you see, obviously, is as uh, if you look at that 300 uh, millimeter uh, uh, there, we have a 60% probability of basically, if you come down from that, uh, of uh, obtaining those those uh, yields. And so um, as we get more plant available water um, at planting, the probability of us obtaining those higher yields uh, continues to go up. Now, as if you think about this year, uh, last year across the Panhandle, we were down about six to seven inches in rainfall across the Panhandle. So we know we are already short. And 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 uh, the winter so far, we, we haven't had a, a, a bunch of moisture coming in either. So uh, likely we're gonna be short on the soil water going into this year. And so keep in mind that we're gonna be um, not as likely to reach those higher yields. And, and uh, and, and so we need to think about uh, what we're gonna be doing for crops and, and also how we manage those crops. Uh, David and his research also identified that that critical period from July 15th to August 25th, uh, that, that kind of reproductive stage of that corn is extremely important um, for our corn yields. And so we might even start with, with a low uh, amount of water at planting, a plant available water at planting but if we are able to catch moisture from July 15th to August 25th, uh, it can completely turn around um, the success of our corn crop, uh, essentially. Um, and so that's kind of what this is showing. This is just showing the amount of, of uh, kilograms per hectare by, by the amount of rainfall. Um, and again, if we're able to catch that to rain at, at that critical stage, it makes a big difference. And so uh, we're not out of the ball game if we can just catch that uh, rain at, at that stage. Um, here's a, a, some different ways to look at it as well. Uh, this was from research done by Drew Lyon at, at the High Plains Ag Lab a few years ago. Uh, here on the left, we have 6.3 inches of, of available water at planting versus 9.3 inches of, of, of plant available water. And then the population in thousands per acre going from eight to 20,000 per acre for those two scenarios. And what you see is when we start at 6.3 inches of plant available water, uh, that uh, lower, uh, uh, we have a much greater chance of, of, of essentially having crop failure, uh, of, of falling short. And as we increase our, our seeding rate, that, that, that chance of, uh, of, of, of having that lower uh, yield increases. Uh, whereas when we have 9.3 inches of plant available water, we don't see that huge drop off uh, in grain yield as we increase our, our population. Uh, but, and, and, and so we're a little, uh, just a little bit tighter on that spread with that higher rate, uh, uh, just, just better probabilities as far as being able to obtain those better yields. Um, and then same thing on this one on the right, it's just looking at the risk of loss as a percent from 3.1 inches of, of plant available water up to 9.4 up here on the top, and then looking at uh, different populations. Again, uh, from 9.4 to 6.3, uh, 12,000 plants per acre provided the, the, uh, the uh, best return or average profit per acre, and it went down from there. So uh, think about how we manage our populations in, in the corn. If we don't have a lot of water, uh, if we're down in this area of 3.1 inches, Increasing our populations is, is not the correct answer. Um, we want to be uh, at that eight to twelve thousand uh, uh, population range. And then, lastly, there has been a lot of work done in skip row corn um, back in the early or two thousands with Bob Klein and Drew Lyon. Uh, there are challenges associated with with the skip row corn when it comes to insurance and how that is viewed. Uh, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, but the uh, recommendation from their research, they had 23 site locations in Colorado, uh, Kansas, and Nebraska, looking at plant two, skip two, or plant one, skip one. And that's what they would recommend that people look at when yields are expected, to, when yields are expected to be less than 75 bushels per acre. Uh, they found uh, that they were able to increase yields 
uh, at that lower range of, of yield uh, by using that skip row. Uh, but they, they did not rec recommend using the plant to skip one uh, over the standard, uh, the, the, the standard planting or, or 30 inch corn. Uh, so we can use skip row to uh, mitigate some of this risk that, you know, if we are expecting drought or expecting uh, uh, dry conditions. Uh, but make sure we check with our insurance before we go uh, go that route. And there's uh, resources online um, about uh, how that went for uh, the uh, that time period, 2004 to 2006, by Nebraska researchers. So that's all I wanted to share today. Um, again, there's lots of, of research that's reported in the booklet. If you have questions on that, reach out to Amanda or I or those who uh, provided those reports. Um, I'll take any questions at this time, or we will move on to um, Jessica. So any questions, put those in the chat. Jessica, you can go ahead and share your slides if you want as we're waiting. Um, any questions? <laughs> 